If you want to learn more about Juno Space and all the awesome things it can do, sign up for our Juno Space Essentials course. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for JSE in the keyword search box. Now let's get to your learning bite. Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the updating Juno Space DMI schemas learning bite. All right, so at this point, you might be asking yourself, what is a Juno Space DMI schema? Well, to answer that question, we have this slide here, and we'll, we'll talk about that. And first, first sub bullet here, device types described by unique data models. And what this is talking about is, uh, it's basically going to refer to a kind of a template that describes unique data models. And that relates to the next sub bullet, because what does that mean? What does that do? It lists all possible fields and attributes for a device type. Okay, so now we're talking about configuring devices. We're talking about the different configurable fields, things like that. What can we do with these devices? And so the next sub bullet is going to kind of explain this a little more. Newer schemas describe new features specific to a version of code for a device type. And so with new schemas or newer schemas, say you have a schema for a MX device for like say like an old version of code, a 10 dot whatever, or maybe even an 11 version of Junos. A schema for 15, Junos 15 dot whatever, it's going to list newer features. And so what does this do? This allows Juno Space and the space application, such as security director, network director, or whatever, to properly configure the managed devices. And so this is important. You know, we talked about uh, how this is basically a schema is basically a template that you know tells space what fields, uh, what parameters can be configured on the managed devices. And so that is hugely important for space to be able to manage those devices properly. Okay, so what happens if you do not have the correct schema? Well, this results in the default schema being used for the managed devices. And we can specify the default schema. It'll The default schema will default to a certain schema on its own for whatever version of space you're using. And that might be okay, but that might not be okay. If you're missing a schema and you have to use the default schema, you want to get as close as possible to the version of code that you're going to be using for those managed devices. And at this point, it kind of begs the question of why would you ever want to use the default schema? Why not just use schemas that you have, you know, that matches the version of code that you're using for your devices, for the managed devices, that is. And the reason behind that is when a new version of code is released, say with Junos, uh, you know, say for an MX or SRX or whatever, uh, there's a little bit of time that uh, it takes to have that schema be available for uh, Juno Space. So there's going to be a little bit of time there that you're not going to, you know, if it's a brand new version of code that you're using on your managed devices, say you're waiting for a certain feature and you upgraded immediately after that new version of code came out because you needed that certain feature, there's probably not going to be a matching schema for it right away. And so what you'll have to do there is use the default schema. Now, keep in mind that if you do have to use the default schema, you want to use a schema that is as close to the managed devices code as possible. So that way you're not going to run into problems with uh, mismatch configuration statements with the schema and the managed device. And uh, we'll talk about that more and show I'll show you that in the demo coming up. Alright, so here's our example. We have four managed devices that are connected to Juno Space through the management network you see here. Uh, VSRX 1 through 4 and the correct schemas are not installed for the managed devices so we need to download those schemas install them and uh, we'll see that here in the demo 
And then I'm going to take this a step further. I didn't list this in the slide, partially because I ran out of room, but what we'll do here is we will not download a schema for one of the devices that we need. As you can see here, the Junos versions we have. Uh, the little box here shows you the devices and which uh, version of Junos they're running. And you can see they're all different. We'll take one of these devices, let's say a BSRX2, and we'll show you how to use the default schema with that. Say, for example, we just didn't have that schema, say it was a new version of code, and uh, the, the schema wasn't available. So I'll show you how to configure the default schema to, to uh, something close to 12.1x47d20.7. Uh, Actually, let's don't do that. Let's use VSRX1. And uh, so that way, VSRX1 will use that default schema. So let's jump to the uh, web GUI. All right, so here's the uh, web GUI for Juno Space. Notice that we are under the network management platform. And to begin, let's first look at our managed devices. We can see here that we have four managed devices, VSRX 1 through 4. Uh, we can see that the connection is up, the management state is in sync to the platform, uh, then the OS versions, those are the OS versions we talked about. Here, let me expand that slightly so it doesn't go to the next line. And we can see here that the, uh, the schema version, the default schema version we're using here is 12.1R3.5. And this is the incorrect schema. We're, it lets us know here that the schema is in need of an update. So let's go to the administration workspace. And in this, we need to go to DMI schemas. And here we can see the list of current schemas that are installed already. Not a huge list. And so we need to get the correct schemas installed. So to do that, we can click the update schema button. And here we have two different options. We can upload an archive file in the TGZ format or we can connect to an SVN repository. This is in my opinion, the better option, this connects in with Juniper, allows you to get you to the latest versions, the most up-to-date versions. And so to begin, we need to click Configure. Then we're presented with the SVN Access Configuration window. And here we need to enter in the URL for the SVN repository. And then, of course, you need to enter in a correct username and password. And then we can do a couple things here. Well, first of all, I do want to talk about the proxy server. That's disabled currently. If you need to enable a proxy server, you need to go under the proxy server configuration before connecting to uh, the SVN repository. And we can test this connection just to see if, you know, this will go out and connect, the credentials will validate correctly. And as you can see here, that's successful. We were able to establish the connection. Let's go ahead and save that. And now that we save that, we can just connect to the repository. It'll take just a minute while it populates the schema database. And here's the database. Uh, there's quite a bit here. As you can see, if I scroll down, there is a lot to look through. And so this might seem like a little much. Uh, we can sort on different fields, installed, available, missing. That missing field is great. And I'll show you how to use that here shortly, but I do want to show you another option to help skinny this down. We know that this is just VSRX. This is going to be a part of the Junos ES family. And we can select that and then click connect again. And that will just retrieve the Junos ES family, those schemas from the database itself. And here's the database. And notice that we only have, look in the family field, Notice that we only have from that Junos ES family. That's great. And, but there's still quite a bit. So we can still filter based on the field. So let's click the missing field. Click it twice. So it you know, puts yes at the top. And we can see we have a few missing. Notice how there's four missing. We have four different devices we're managing with four different versions of Junos. So let's go ahead and select three of them. Remember that we said that we were going to select the uh, one uh, for VSRX1, 
that's a fairly uh, late later version of code. You can see it was done in 2015, uh, January 29th. Uh, it's about a year old, but we're not going to select that one so we can use the default schema. So it's the 12.1x46d30.2, uh, and we'll install the rest. We can check the job, watch the install progress. I'm going to pause the video here while it installs. This will take a bit of time. All right, so that schema update is complete. Uh, the job completed 100% successfully. Let's go back to DMI schemas, that workspace. We can see here we do have some new DMI schemas for the 12.1x version. And so that's great. We got the three new ones. That's fantastic. Now, what about setting that default schema? That's pretty easy. So to do that, we can just simply select one of the schemas. And then we can go up to the Actions drop-down box and select Set as default schema. But before we do that, let's look at the view missing schemas. This might be helpful. See we're missing this one schema. That's great. Well, we know which one's missing now. Let's go ahead and set this schema as the default schema. And it gives us just a, an update of what we're doing. We're setting that as the default. Okay, so let's scroll back up and go to device management. We can see that VSRX1 is now going to be using the 12.x47d10 uh, version as the default schema. Still lets us know we need a schema update, but to update the schema, it'd be the exact same way that I showed you beforehand. And I just wanted to also show you how to set that default schema. Obviously, if you have the schema available for the correct version, you'll want to use that correct schema. And so in this instance, we would go download that the correct schema version for VSRX1. But I just wanted to show you that uh, how to set that default schema. And one thing to keep in mind here, the 12.1x47d10.4 might not be the best version to use as a default schema here because VSRX1 is running 12.1x46d30. Eh, you know, that's you kind of want to use something beforehand, but this will work, you know, just as an example to show you how to use that default schema. So that brings us to the end of this learning bite. We discussed uh, Juno Space DMI schemas, talked about how to install missing schemas, and how to set the default schema. And uh, so, as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.